Chat, this is a segment called E.T. Encounters. And um, this is by Octopula, or Octopula, I'm not sure. And um, they made the Cryptid Pack from a month ago, which was a pretty big success. I liked it. People liked it. Now, we have potentially some interesting encounters with aliens on planet Earth. Now, of course, I'm not here to tell you if these are real. You have to make up your own mind. But I can read the information. I can present the images and the sounds. And we can have some discussion. A chat member just said they aren't real. But then another chat member just said all of these are real. So, there you go. I've got a new um, spooky music playlist from Sir Crow, so thank you for that. So let's get started with um, E.T. Encounters. We'll start with the Flatwoods Monster of 1952. All right. Uh, huh, that's an interesting one. So it says here, I took a huge dumpster dive into E.T. Encounters and found some gaming-related stuff, plus illustrations. Saw some insectoid genitals, too. Okay, hope those weren't included. This is the Flatwood Monster, and um, a group of seven approached the top of the hill where the fireball had landed. Beyond the hill, they reported seeing a pulsating light. Suddenly, two powerful light beams pierced the darkness. They saw a large man-like creature nearly 12 feet tall and about 4 feet wide. Making no sound, it floated toward them. The creature had a red face and bright green clothing, which hung in folds below the waist. There was an almost sickening metallic odor emanating from its body. The witnesses quickly fled the scene. Later investigation found only a lingering odor. Two large skid marks, don't laugh, and trampled glass. It's become a popular tourist attraction. And an inspired Majora's Mask Romani Ranch Quest. So, yeah. Actually, yeah, I can see it. Also, good timing on the music. That was Twilight Princess music. But, um, weird. I wonder what that smell was like. Maybe I don't want to know. Hopkinsville Goblins. Okay, we got some goblins here. Family arrived at the Hopkinsville police station claiming that small alien creatures from a spaceship were attacking their farmhouse. They'd been holding them off with gunfire for nearly four hours. They claimed they'd been shooting at 12 to 15 short, dark figures who repeatedly popped up at the doorway or peered into the windows. These are explained to be great horned owls. Psychologists have used the alleged incident as an academic example of pseudoscience to help students distinguish truth from fiction. This also inspired the miserable, annoying bastard of Pokemon, Sableye. Note, those are not my words. But yeah, that's, um, that's a pretty cool illustration. It's very crusty, the bottom one, and it looks like there's like several Bigfoots. Big feet in the house looking out at the goblins. But um, what's funny about them, yeah, I can see the sable eye. And, and also they're glowing like owls don't glow. Clearly aliens. Clearly. Space brains. Oh, those are weird. Space brains of Palos Verdes, 1971, USA. Two friends... Peter Rodriguez and John Hodges were about to dive, drive off excuse me, when they noticed a pair of huge, bluish, mist-shrouded, disembodied brains lying in front of them in the middle of the road. Floating brain. They described one of the creatures as being approximately the size of an overgrown softball, while the second one had the dimensions of a human torso and seemed to have red eye-like organ wedged into it. They wasted no time in speeding away from these bizarre beings, Five years later, under hypnosis, Hodges discovered that the brains had been waiting for him at his home. Somehow they transported him to a metal room full of computers, where he had encountered several seven-foot-tall web 
fingered, gray-skinned beings. These creatures explain that the brains were actually just organic translators to allow them to communicate with earthly life. The gray beings warned that humanity must learn to control its dangerous power or face obliteration. And that's a Galactic Creatures fandom wiki, Space Brains of Palos Verdes. There's a link included. Um, I want to say these inspired Metroids, but probably not. Sus Alien 1993. It's not called the Sus Alien. Oh my god. Yeah. Sus Alien 1993, Italy. The Air Force officer thought it was a balloon. He approached with the intention of taking it as a gift to his grandson, but he soon realized that it wasn't a balloon. But it seemed to be some animated thing. When he got close to it, it disappeared at incredible speed. Wow. That really is just a sus alien. Um, I don't really have much to say. <laughs> I mean, I kind of do believe that people see strange things. Now, is it drugs? Is it some kind of um, swamp gas off of Venus? Is it a, an owl? You know, is it a balloon? Or is it just the human mind interacting with solar rays? However, I would not be frightened if I saw this particular thing. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> that's what I would probably do. Here's a little bonus goblin. So this is an iconic UFO encounter from Finland. Two men encounter a UFO that was disguised as a cloud. It beams down a strange goblin-like humanoid holding a black box. Both men experience sickness afterwards, including vomiting, numbness in legs, and passing black urine. Ooh! There are also other reports of bright lights seen in the sky. That's just a gnome. That's like more of a gnome than a goblin. But, um... You know, this, this guy inspired Tingle from Zelda, just like the previous one inspired Among Us. Very long-nosed duende here. I, again, I, if I saw something that looked like this and he was like a tiny little fella and he was wearing like a pointy hat, I would, I might be a little scared because I'd be like, well, first of all, that doesn't make any sense. But then I'd be like, eh. To me, it's more some of the stuff you're going to see in this next image. So here's an image of a number of creatures that have been reported over the years. And it's like, this is just like a mega image of various gray aliens. And you can see the one on the top left that looks like an owl. There's a, a cat girl. Of course, everyone is immediately drawn to the cat girl. But remember, chat, this was like a lot of this stuff was established as real life lore before there was Internet. So in order for people to get their OCs published, they'd have to say that they saw them in a field at two in the morning, you know, and, and a flying saucer. So, um, I mean, listen, I feel like there's something to the gray alien. I don't know what it is, but. I find them freaky and weird. The mantis creatures I find freaky and weird. Uh, the reptilian stuff is just like dinosaurs evolving humanoid form. But um, the other thing is the mantis creatures. Those mantis things, they're just giant manti. That would freak the fuck out of me. Like, so sure, I could see a little gnome fellow, but if I saw a mantis, I would be, I'd be real scared. And also... There was that one um, documentary I talked about with the guy who was jack... The mantis creatures were watching a dude jack off into a cup. I know it sounds crazy, but this is, in, uh, this is a documentary on Netflix. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, but... It, you know, it was in the... Do uh, Love and Saucers is the name of it. Uh, you know, go nuts. Have fun. Let's do um, crop circles next.
Also, some of those aliens just looked like very generic sci-fi like creature designs. Like I swear to God, there's one here that looks like um, he's very panicular, but he also reminds me of Star Wars. Like a, what are they called? Cel Celestrians, or they're from Sullust. The red dude is cool too because he's got a long nose, like a Bothan spy or something. Um, you got like an ET. There's okay. Listen, listen. These have to just be illustrations from Star Wars. Because what's eight? Eight is just Star Wars. Oh, Nebraska, same thing. Four is pretty cool because four is like a weird skull creature alien. Um, but yeah, a lot of these look like Jersey Devil type you know, small foot creatures. I don't know. Anyway, Star Wars. Let's do a crop circle thing. Led Zeppelin box set. <laughs> Led Zeppelin box set showing a crop circle that appeared in Alton, uh, sorry, at Alton Barnes, Wiltshire, 1990. This huge pictogram gained worldwide uh, publicity and attracted thousands of visitors. There are thousands of documented crop circles every year. Over 200 more appear around the world. A, a majority of the reported ones have appeared in southern England, where crop circles tend to cluster around sacred megalithic sites such as Stonehenge, Av um, Avebury, and Silbury Hill. Since the early 90s, the original simple circles have developed into huge, intricate geometrical patterns of stunning precision and beauty. Hmm. There are many theories on how and why crop circles are formed. Man-made, shifts in Earth's magnetic fields, plasma vortexes, extraterrestrial communications, time travel markings, paranormal activity, etc. The oldest known recorded crop circle event occurred in 9th century France, where the Bishop of Lyon sent out a pro- a prohibition to the recently converted locals against using seeds taken from crop circles for pagan fertility rituals. Oh, that's wild. Well, um, Led Zeppelin's great. I love their music. Um, the thing here, though, is... There's actually a video showing some old fellas with, like, wood making crop circles. And I watched a video covering these fellas where they admitted it. But then there's also differences between the crop circles that some um, have been researched a bit and the ones they've made, including broken stalks versus no broken stalks, radiation versus no radiation, and the intricacy and speed of the designs. So, that's... Um, Maybe it's just a couple old guys. Here's the mowing devil. Another historical crop circle event occurred in Hertfordshire, England, in August 1678. The information comes down to us via an old pamphlet telling the story of a mowing devil being a true relation of a farmer who bar uh, bargaining with a poor mower about the cutting down three half acres of oats. Okay. Um, anyway, there, there's a poem, uh, and it's weird, but documented evidence formations can be found in the recorded in the records of Professor Robert Plot, 1640 to 1696. He believed the wind was creating geometrically perfect vortexes, and then that affected the crops on the ground. He also discovered a fossilized femur of a megalosaurus dinosaur, which he considered to be the scrotum of a giant. Okay, well, that was a hell of a last sentence there. But I do like the mowing devil. Here's the Doug and Dave scam. This is exactly what I was talking about. In 1991, the British tabloid Today ran a front page story headline, uh, The Men Who Conned the World. The story claimed that all of the crop circles in England were the work of two pensioners, Doug Bauer and David Chorley, aged 67 and 62. Their tools included a four-foot plank of wood, 
ball of string along with a piece of wire dangling from a baseball cap to serve as a sighting device, enabling them to construct perfectly straight lines by focusing on a distant object at the dead of night. They said that the idea of making crop circles had come to them after a boring evening at the pub in 1978, and their only motive was to have a laugh. <laughs> this popularized the idea that all crop circles were created by humans, and nowadays there are many crop circle artists that use wooden planks and computer software. Yeah, we were having a laugh. Where's North from here? I do respect the hustle. I do. I love the idea of a good troll where people just kind of walk by something and they're like, why? Like, why would someone spend that much time doing something so dumb? Which ultimately is probably what the aliens are doing anyway. Alton Barnes Wiltshire. Most crop circle designs are symmetrical. It enables you to efficiently create a very complex looking design with a relatively simple set of instructions that repeat. Asymmetrical designs are far more complex and time consuming to create, which is why you don't really see many asymmetrical crop circles. This one took three nights to make and had to require a lot of people. Farmers lost 30,000 pounds in income between 2018 and 2022 as a result of 92 crop circles of varying sizes, according to an analysis carried out by The Guardian. Yeah, w you know, we, were, we was having a laugh. And then the, the farmers are like, you bloody fucking twats. Okay, we've got um, some stuff here. You know, there's, there's like a lot of information here. This is a, too much reading. But what I'll say is this. Using stalks, uh, this is real crop formations. Using wooden planks often breaks the stalks. Researchers have determined on the real crop formations, the stalks are bent at the growth nodes. 90 degrees are not broken. So similar effect is caused by microwaving grain. However, this would quickly burn the crops. 90% of the crop circles are formed over aquifers. Some researchers have discovered that large amounts of this underground water disappear beneath the crop formations right after they form. Soil inside the circles has been baked as hard as cement, whereas the rest of the field was moist and muddy. X-ray diffraction study shows that clay minerals exhibit significant increases in the degrees of crystallization, which could have been produced by intense pressure or heat. Real crop formations, flattened plants, are largely undamaged until visitors arrive and tend to continue growing, where in hoaxed circles, the stalks are generally broken, crushed, and often killed. Studies on crop circle seeds exhibit a massive increase in vigor and growth rate up to five times that of the control seeds. Strange substances, such as jelly-like or powdery deposits, are sometimes found on the plants and soil inside crop circles. Powdery deposits that have been identified, including high purity silicon dioxide, magnesium oxide, and magnetite, meteoric, uh, meteoric dust. There's jelly, so this is actually, they're, they're just goon circles. Dead wild animals are rarely, rarely found in crop formations, but there have been a few exceptions. Some birds had apparently been caught up in the cre uh, creation of a formation and had been blown apart and disintegrated by the force. Mixed in with the blood and feathers were mi minute bits of flesh, but there were no bones or any distinguishable or recognizable parts. Lab tests on some of the remains confirm that they belong to an exploded bird. Holy shit. Two dead porcupines were found in two different Canadian crop circles. One had an almost disintegrated into blackened parts, and the other had been squashed like a pancake. That's not funny. Scrape marks and a row of standing broken quills indicate that the latter porcupine had been dragged to the center of the formation from the perimeter. The flow of flattened quills on its body went in the same direction as they lay of the fallen crop. Analysis of the other porcupine showed that the blackness of the remains was not due to burning. Most animals probably sense something is about to happen and run away, but porcupines respond to danger by simply raising their spines and sitting tight. In one crop formation, numerous dead flies were found stuck by their tongues to the seed heads of the plants, their legs and wings spread out widely, as if in a spasm. Some appear to have been exploded. Other flies were still in a perfect state, but most were nevertheless dead. 
Some were still alive, but stunned, and after being liberated from the plants, they flew away. Here's some anomalous effects of crop circles. So, there are numerous reports of electronic and mechanical equipment breaking down in crop circles. Phones often fail to operate. Camera and audio interference. Tractor that entered the circle had electrical failure, but sprang back to life as it was towed out of the circle. Magnetic compasses frequently behave erratically both inside crop formations and when flying directly over them. Watches and, broke and clocks may run fast or slow in crop circles. The effects of crop circles on humans vary widely. Depending on the formation, people may have positive or negative effects. Some of the positive effects included uh, heightened awareness, a sense of peace and well-being. Negative effects include nausea, headaches, dizziness, fatigue, lack of mental clarity. However, both positive and negative effects have been experienced in known man-made formations. Interesting. Animals are often seen to avoid crop circles. Dogs and horses sometimes refuse to enter crop circles. Sheep sometimes try to move far away as possible from a field where a crop formation later appears. Flocks of birds have been seen breaking formation directly above. Um, we got a whole bunch of eyewitness reports, uh, and I don't want to keep reading, because this is massive amounts of reading. We need uh, more concise, I think, would be better in the future, but it's interesting stuff, for sure. This is kind of the kind of shit I could just read to myself for, like, a couple hours, but... Um, there's reports of balls, discs, columns of light that are seen over the area where the circles appear. Several dozen people have heard high-pitched trilling noise before the crop circles occurred. Hundreds of people have witnessed crop circles forming right in front of their eyes. And the report is that the whole process is very rapid, taking between 10 and 20 seconds. In some cases, there seem to have been visible whirlwind in the atmosphere as it happens. So, for example, I'll just go ahead and switch over to this. From this height, Oliver's Castle, one of the most often debated observations was made early one morning in 1996. A young man who had spent the night here and had brought a video camera with him was woken during early dawn by a humming sound. Here I'm standing at Oliver's Castle at precisely. Just on a side note, I, I was looking at that scene and it reminded me of that fucking shock video, the, the screamer video. Precisely the same spot as John Whaley was standing in August 1996 when he supposedly for the first time in history, managed to film the creation of a crop circle. Did they need the new wave music? Or a new age, sorry, not new wave. That would be like Elvis Costello. Um, that the crop circle was not here on the previous day, but had appeared on the following morning, was a fact. That John Whaley was here at dawn could be confirmed by a military patrol that happened to be jogging by at the time. John went to the local pub later that same day and showed his film to the people there. Even so, many believe that he had managed to manipulate the film with computer animation in the meantime, something that computer animation experts doubt. To overlay a perfect animation over a handheld, unstable film would need several days of work using the computer equipment of that time. Even today, the film is still a great mystery, and John has gone underground due to the intense interest that his film created. Wow. That's fascinating, but what's most interesting is that John now lives like a gopher. Under the ground, under the rock. That's very suspicious and highly irregular. Definitely. But yeah, I do have more um, stories of eyewitness kind of stuff, like uh, a young man um, noticed small white light in the sky and, uh, in 1999, and it hovered three meters above the ground, and uh, the air was like trembling as if it were hot and like a light faded and disappeared and then um you know there was crop circles stuff like that so so that's like this kind of shit there's there's all kinds of reports of that kind of thing it's what i'm getting from this but here here's um a little bit more so this is called the julia set 
and this is another historic one, I think, or like a pretty famous one. Um, not that historic. In 2001, two new crop formations were reported near Chilbolton Radio Telescope in Hampshire, UK. One represented a human face, the other represented, uh, resembled a radio transmission that the search for the ET uh, intelligence SETI sent from the Arecibo Radio Telescope in 1974. The observatory claims their cameras didn't catch anything unusual. A year later, in the same field, image 4 appeared. The SETI message was directed at the M13 globular cluster. That means we've still got about 25,000 years left before it arrives at the first planet that might have a chance of receiving it. Let's see. Uh, I, that was, sorry, I read the wrong thing. That was for this. I fucked up. Sorry, chat. Yeah, and this is the person. This is the face of the person. I mean, honestly... I have seen this before, but yeah, honestly, if you're gonna, like, do a fake crop circle with some degree of intricacy, using, like, the computer, and you really want to troll people and freak them out, this is a great way to do it. Just to play skeptic for a second. It's a little on the nose, this one. But, okay, this one that I was showing you before, this is the, um... This one's called the Julia Set. In July 1996, a complex Julia Set pattern appeared in broad daylight between 5.30 and 6.15 p.m. Directly next to Stonehenge. It was made of 151 circles. Oh, that's the amount of Pokemon there were in Gen 1. Flies have been found stuck to the crops as if their wings had been melted. Radiation level 76% above normal had been observed, only to mysteriously disappear soon afterward. The growth nodes in the crop stems often appear to be elongated, consisting, uh, consistent with the effects of microwaving, and their cells reveal microscopic pit holes, suggesting they were flat, uh, flash heated in a microsecond. Some plants also have a thin layer of carbon covering them. I'm sure there's a perfectly, perfectly reasonable and rational explanation for this. But the idea that this happened in broad daylight in 45 minutes next to Stonehenge is fucking insane to me. Because there's also a road right there and there's tourism at Stonehenge. So what, like what? I don't know, man. Oh, this one is freaking. <laughs> this one's very, very... Honestly, you want to talk about too obvious? This is another one that's way too obvious for me. But here's uh, Extraterrestrial holding a disc. Crabwood, UK, 2002. This was from... Um, this is some text from Maya or Mia Pitkonen, University of Helsinki. The Crabwood message consists of two parts, an alien picture and a picture representing a spiral-like bit sequencing start, uh, sequence starting from the center of the picture and proceeding counterclockwise. It has been proposed that the message was coded using 9-bit code and that the 8-bit portions obey ASCII code. With this assumption, the message reads as... Beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises. Much pain, but still time. Elusive something or eel something you've there is good out there we oppose deception conduit closing 0x07 at the end of the message would produce a bell sound there's also three dots behind the alien that match with orion's belt that's again man i don't know The Stonehenge one is interesting to me. Like, that feels more... <laughs> that feels more, like, mysterious as opposed to alien face. Beware, humans! In my personal opinion. 
Um, this one's Avebury Manor 1 to 2. 2008, next to the Avebury Stone Megaliths. Exact diagram of the alignment of planets on December 21, 2012. Remember when the world ended that day? Uh, the farmer at the Av at Avebury was not pleased and tried to destroy it by driving three lines through it with his tractor. Hmm. The circle marks... The circle markers then returned and made a series of modifications, including a second circle that was surrounded by a series of strange, small illustrations. Like... Could we get a camera on that to, <laughs> to see exactly what happened? Holy shit. And I guess this is the modification. Think of the poor farmers. They're just trying to get their croppage on. You got some grid circles here. A number of interesting patterns. Um, let's see. So, like, 2007, 2008, you have, um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this over, hang on, because the text is getting weird here. Alright, so, uh, here's some more. I mean, they're cool. They're definitely cool. Most of these are from 2005 to 2006. Bottom right is UK 2000. It's composed of 308 triangles and 44 spirals based on phi or the golden mean. With 1% tolerance. A spiral that is difficult to draw even on paper. It's definitely a lot of effort. Like, people... I know people go through great effort for trolling purposes. And I know people go through a lot of effort just to, like, you know, do hoaxes. I mean, we see it all the time. And, and they happen, like, I, the Triforce and the fucking Unicorn Fountain in Ocarina of Time, for example. However, yeah, that's a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort. Two thousand nine was a very busy year with massive formations. These might be part of the some artist challenge or contest. The massive butterfly human was found in the Netherlands. Bottom left is the previous image four. Oh. I'm sure there is like yeah, who can do the craziest crop circle? It's like an underground like fucking cult of just crop circle weirdos. No offense to the crop circle weirdos. These are the latest crop circles, 2020 to 2024. The bottom right one is um, in the UK. Notice the very thin inner circle, which is too narrow to walk in. Wait, which one is that? I guess it's these, yeah. I'm not sure if it's that one or... I think some of the, the text might be off a little bit, but yeah, the, the giant butterfly, the mushroom, these things are fucking awesome. And here's a bonus one from 2011. <laughs> okay. Well, after reading all of this, and, um, you know, looking and watching and seeing that video. I'm going to say that some of these seem very intricate and with a good laptop and some good equipment and a number of dedicated people, I believe it can be done. Maybe not easily, but that it can be done. Though, you have to wonder, for some of the more insane ones... If they're doing them in just some field, and farmers are losing money from this shit, like, are they just doing this stuff in one night? So I do genuinely believe that a lot of these are done by people. Some, I think, are being done by goats, and others are being done by the mantis creature. 
But um, the Stonehenge one I find to be very compelling because that's just like broad daylight. So very, very weird. One night crop circles and then the farmer loses so much money. Let's do some images from the solar system. Strange images. Disclaimer, this might not be 100% accurate. Please do your own research. Some of this is directly copy-pasted from NASA ESA space.com. So this is um, the note I ha have here from Octopulla. But we'll start with this one. Habitation on the moon. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something seen very this before. important to be developed from the moon, I'm not sure what it is right now. And I sure think we should identify what it is for America to make such gross expenditures again for human habitation on the moon. We can help. We can join with. Together, we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by the comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? Well, uh, the universe put it there. If you choose, God put it there. Is Maybe that yeah, so that's a pretty famous interview. Um, Buzz Aldrin <laughs> said there's a monolith on Phobos. And then Les Claypool and Sean Lennon released an album called The Monolith of Phobos. And uh, this is the cover of the fucking album. <laughs> I, I love the third eye. But yeah, I mean, Grandpa needs to get back to bed. Uh, but it is something that he said. And, um, well, I, that might, is this it? I don't know. NASA Mars Global Surveyor, Surveyor, <laughs> Surveyor, MGS, yeah, Colonel, 1998. Actually, that's the year of, of Metal Gear Solid, weirdly. Here's the monolith. Um, this might be a boulder ejected from the largest impact crater on Phobos. There's a similar object on Mars that's often confused with this one. Phobos is tiny. It's about 16.7 miles and regularly shaped like an asteroid. This has led to the suspicion that it's a rogue asteroid captured by Mars's gravity. Recent studies of ESA's Mars Express scans uh, estimate Phobos to be 30% hollow, containing geometric caverns and leaking heat. Interesting. I mean, to me, that looks like a boulder. That doesn't look like a monolith. When I think monolith, I think uh, Stanley Tubrick, 2001. This is 433 Eros. NASA near Shoemaker tw uh, 2000. Eros is famous for the, uh, as the first asteroid to be orbited by a spacecraft and the first asteroid to have a spacecraft land on it. There's a total of five square craters, which the head NASA scientist said are telling us something very interesting. There are also stones that have highly unusual geometric shapes. Yeah, the one, the, the close-up is a very unusual, natural, geometric shape indeed. Here's the space whale. I've never seen this before. So this is from NASA Cassini. Saturn's moon Titan has a mysterious island appearing and disappearing in one of its hydrocarbon lakes. NASA's explanations for the feature included surface waves, rising bubbles, floating solids, solids suspended just below the surface, or perhaps something more exotic. Titan's hydrocarbon lakes have long been a source of curiosity for scientists who speculate that life may be able to survive on the moon's surface. But if life exists on Titan, it would be very different than life on Earth, which is intimately tied to liquid water. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Okay. This is, um... Aumaumau. 
I'm not saying that correctly, but I think he made Zelda. Aumau Mau is the first interstellar object detected passing through the solar system in 2017. It means a messenger from afar arriving first in Hawaiian. It had an unusual 400 meter, 1300 foot long cigar shape, which didn't resemble any known asteroid or comet. It was at least 10 times more reflective and enough to suggest the gleam of burnished metal. Most strangely, it, as it zoomed off after swooping by the sun, the object sped up faster than could be explained by gravitational grip alone, as there were no evaporating gases jetting from it, like in typical comets. Many studies agree that this was likely an ancient light sail from a galactic civilization. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Where's that last line so out of pocket? Like... You know, here's this like scientific stuff, and then and oh, many studies agree this was likely an ancient light sail from galactic civilization. I saw that episode of Deep Space Nine. Um, I do remember this, by the way, and I do think it's very interesting. I like it. I don't know what it means. To what does it portend? Death Star, Mimas, and Tethys. There are many moons in our solar system that resemble the Death Star. Most famous one is Saturn's moon Mimas, which has a five kilometer deep geometrical crater left. It also has a very bizarre Pac-Man shaped heat signature that's also suspected to be difference in texture on the surface. It's like differences in texture on the surface. Another Saturn's moon, Tethys, also has a similar huge crater and Pac-Man heat pattern. And that's the one on the right. Hmm. I'm not seeing Pac-Man. Am I supposed to be seeing Pac-Man? Here's, um... Hmm. I think we have, uh... Oh, sorry. I got a little bit ahead here. This one is the most insane. This one, I remember there's uh, some website called Moon with a View that I read when I was younger, and it really captured my imagination because it was so weird. This moon is called Iapetus, and it's another Saturn moon. And this one had a whole fucking, like, giant list of things that were just weird with it. Uh, the ridge being the most obvious one. There's also hexagonal patterns on it. And we're not even getting into most of the Iapetus stuff here. Like, you can't see some of the other stuff, but um, it's interesting. Saturn's moon Iapetus has a huge uh, geometrical crater and a gigantic raised ridge along its entire equator, which might make it the best contender for the Death Star. <laughs> I didn't know we were looking for a Death Star. There are two theories on how this ridge was formed. Some scientists think the ridge was formed at an earlier time when Iapetus rotated much faster than it does today, and others think the ridge is made of material left from the collapse of a ring. Most scientists, however, agree that this ridge is actually home to the science bases that are stored there by the giant mantis alien that jack off into a cup. I just added that last part. Um, this one is Miranda from Voyager 2. Uranus's Laugh It Up moon Miranda has a gigantic, highly unusual L-shaped geometric feature on the side, as well as a huge pentagonal shape on the backside. It's called Frankenstein's Monster because it looks like it was pieced together from parts that didn't quite merge properly. It has huge fault cannons as deep as 20 kilometers, terraced layers, and the juxtaposition of old and young surfaces seemingly at random. These features are shaped like trapezoids, and there are no other structures like them in the solar system. This is kind of like stuff that I remember seeing in books that I had growing up that made me want to be an astronomer. Like, I seriously love how weird even just our solar system is. And uh, I remember this moon being one of the early examples of stuff that I enjoyed. And being like, what could that be? Obviously, you know, there's there's more explanations than we're, than I have here. I'm giving you very brief paragraphs of information. I'm sure there's plenty of papers done on all this stuff. But it's cool to think about and look at.
So here's Ceres. Dwarf planet Ceres is the largest object in the asteroid belt. It has mysterious glowing craters that are still unsolved. Wait. Oh god. Chat, I did it again. The fucking Death Star thing? I screwed up. I'm sorry. Some of this got confusing because I saw many things labeled as Death Star. <sighs> okay. This is Mimas and Tethys. The first thing I read. Johnny can fix this right up. He, it, he doesn't need to. It's fine. Um, a little confusion is good for the soul. Trust me. But here's the Pac-Man. I'm like, where's the Pac-Man stuff? Clearly, this is Pac-Man. Okay, now this is Ceres, which if you've watched The Expanse, I believe there's um, Ceres Station is part of that show in the book. So there's mysterious glowing craters. Um, NASA chief engineer said, I don't think it's possible to look at those without thinking of shining beacons calling out to us as travelers on the cosmic seas. That doesn't help, as poetic as that is. Another mystery is the five kilometer tall pyramid shaped mountain randomly standing in the middle of nowhere that is glowing with one bright side and one dark side. Hey, can we spend time as a society, as a culture, as a race, as a humanity, looking into shit like this, instead of, like, which old asshole is better? Holy shit. We got glowing pyramids on a fucking planet. Well, whatever this is. Uh, asteroid, large planet, dwarf planet. We're, oh man, we're so in the weeds. We need to get out there. Let's get out there. Chad, I'll go. I'll pack some sandwiches. Fucking hell. This, this is so much more interesting. Meanwhile, NASA's like, you know, seems like a shining beacon calling out to us travelers. This could be like the biggest answer to all of our questions as a, as like a culture, as, as a fucking like life form on this planet. Why are we not asking more questions? Sorry, I'm getting angry. It's fine. We just focus on so much dumb shit and so much drama and it just sucks. And, you know, to me, this is much more interesting. I like this better. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to get, like, politically pre- I barely did. It's fine. All right. Here's a Death Star. <laughs> Another Death Star! Enceladus, I believe is how you pronounce that. Here's another Saturn moon. It has an unusual heat map of parallel stripes that are called Tiger Stripes on the South Pole. This shape is usually associated with military bases. These fra uh, fractures gush icy water from the moon's surface at approximately 400 milliseconds. Wait. 400 ms? Or 800 miles a second? Oh, meters a second, <laughs> sorry, versus 800 miles a second. The eruptions appear to be continuous, generating an enormous halo of fine ice dust around Enceladus, which supplies material to Saturn's E-ring. Only a small fraction of the material ends up on the ring. However, with most of it falling back down like snow to the moon's surface, helping keep Enceladus bright white. With its global ocean, unique chemistry, and internal heat, Enceladus has become a promising lead in our search for worlds where life could exist. So, I'll just try to get all the right images from here on out. I'm going to double check. But look at this. It's the moon. You might recognize this thing. Here's some interesting things about our moon. The moon is mathematically perfect. Well, so perfect. It's easier to explain it should not exist. Harvard astrophysicist Erwin Shapiro said, The best possible explanation for the moon is observational error. The moon doesn't exist. The moon is bigger than it should be, apparently older than it should be, and much lighter in mass than it should be. It occupies an unlikely orbit, and so extraordinary that all existing explanations for its presence are fraught with difficulties. All the remaining planets fit exactly between moon and earth on certain points. There are no other moon-like satellite relationships in our solar system. The moon is way too massive satellite compared to other planets in our solar system. During Apollo 12 mission, they tested seismic readings by crashing the lunar module. 
NASA said it rang like a bell, and the reverber uh, reverberation continued for 30 minutes. Craters are way too shallow. Uh, Gargarin Crater is 270 kilometers wide, but only three, uh, sorry, five kilometers deep. If this would hit Earth, the depth should be at least 1,100 kilometers. The moon has rare metals, which are rarely found on Earth. Titanium requires high temperatures, and NASA samples are way too pure to be natural. Perfect eclipse is mathematically impossible. Coincidences among the coincidences, and it is a freak of nature. There's a lot of uh, videos about the moon and, um, you know, how weird it is that it could be hollow and that it's like, you know, completely locked with our orbit. Um, clearly, you're getting a bias from this text. And me, as someone who's reading this text, I think it's fascinating. But I'm not a fucking scientist. That astrophysicist dude sure thought the moon was interesting. But um, when it comes down to it, I'm sure a lot of this could be explained scientifically and mathematically. But that doesn't mean that it isn't still kind of weird. Especially the eclipse being perfect like that is, is kind of cool. Now, also, as much as I would like to interact with the chat, uh, Vinny, none of this stuff about the moon sounds like real science. Where are you getting this information? Yeah, that's why it would be tough for me to interact with the chat. Now, listen, I would love to have the conversation, but I would never get off of point one. So, what I would recommend doing, if this piques your curiosity and your interest, and all of this sounds like bullshit, or if it sounds like kind of cool or interesting, maybe there's some scientific journals out there if you want to be real nerdy about it, or if you don't have a lot of time, you just watch TikTok. Did you know the moon reverberated for 30 minutes when NASA crashed a fucking module into it? And then, you know, you can get everything you need from TikTok, or you can just go to YouTube and watch some videos, but whatever you do to find this stuff, I hope, I hope you find what you're looking for and not jape information uh remember though i did start this segment with as it says here disclaimer this might not be 100 percent accurate some of this is copy pasted directly from nasa esa and space.com so at the very least some of it seems to have been sourced from legitimate websites but let's continue so Square on the moon, ocean of storms formation, NASA gravity recovery, uh, recovery and interior laboratory, GRAIL. The rectangular pattern of gravity anomalies was completely unexpected. Its angular corners and straight sides contradicts the theory that Procolarum is an ancient impact basin, since such an impact would create a circular basin. Instead, the new research suggests processes beneath the moon's surface dominated the evolution of this region. Okay, so this is where things start getting a little bit weird on the moon. Um, and again, this is way beyond me, but uh, yeah, the Valley of Monuments. In 1966, NASA's Lunar Orbiter 2 took a photo that shocked the media. Eight huge obelisks of different heights appeared to rise up from off the moon's surface. Based on the shadows, the smallest ones are about 3 meters, 10 feet tall, and the tallest are 25 meters, or 75 feet. It is unusual that these extremely tall and thin towers would survive the moon's bombardment of sand and rocks, if they would be natural. There also appears to be multiple large rectangular-shaped depressions or pits. Um, there's also, of course, discussion of bases on the back of the moon you know that's the fun stuff there was some dude who went on record saying that he was you know there was some re reveal of information that there were bases on the moon uh at, but you know that gets into aliens and as we all know there's no such thing it's just two old guys from england with uh, planks wooden pl wooden planks according to an article in argos <laughs> magazine Space, uh, Soviet space engineer Alexei Abramov has come up with a rather startling geometrical analysis of the arrangements of these objects. 
By calculating the angles at which they appear to be set, he asserts that they constitute an Egyptian triangle on the moon. A precise geometric configuration known as in ancient Egypt as Abaka. The distribution of these lunar objects states Ab... How do you say this? Ab Abravov? It, it's spelled two different ways. It's similar to the plan of the Egyptian pyramids constructed by the pharaohs Cheops, Chephren, and Menkara at Giza near Cairo. The centers of the spires in this lunar abaca are arranged in precisely the same way as the apices or apices of the great pyramids, the three great pyramids. There's a lot of words I've never had to say out loud before, chat. And I don't have someone to help with pronunciation, so please bear with me. Moon, dark side. Soviet Zond 3, 1965. Images showing a giant tower left and a transparent dome bottom right on the dark side of the moon. Skeptics claim these to be image errors and how Soviets didn't know how to put images together. I mean, sure, I could see that. Also, I don't really get a dome from that image. That could be, you know, just dust. I don't know. I don't really know better. Here's the uh, face on Mars. Famous face on Mars was captured by NASA's Viking 1 orbiter in 1976 and Mars Global Surveyor in 2001. In 1976, a NASA press release said that the formation resembles a human head. However, NASA had already correctly interpreted the image as an optical illusion caused by the illumination angle of the sun. The formation surface morphology and resulting shadows giving the impression of eyes, nose, and mouth. So, yeah, this was a big kind of controversial thing. And then, of course, they went back and um, they, they hired Peter Jackson to fake it. I mean... No, what they did was they just got a better look at it from a different, using different technology, different angle, different lights, and what you have is just a giant mound of nothing. Very disappointing for a guy like me who wants it to be real. The European Space Agency recreated a 3D rectified image of the face. Mars pyramids. There's not really much information here, but... Yeah. Very um, interesting. What I'm seeing here, it doesn't 100% look like... To me, they look like mountains. I, I wouldn't look at this and immediately go pyramid. You know, to me, those just look like... I mean, the face is freaky as fuck in the top right there, but um, everything else, to me looks like jagged mountains. There'd be knights in Cydonia. Mars Comic. Harvey Comics released a comic strip called The Face on Mars in their second issue of the Race for the Moon series in 1958. These comics were intended to get people excited about space travel and ensure that NASA funding would continue. The comic is about an ancient statue and pyramids on Mars that contain history of the magnificent giants. This was 20 years before the NASA pictures. I'm telling you, it's those two old guys from England. Here's some Mars topography. One of the most striking aspects of the Martian surface is the contrast between the southern and northern hemispheres. Most of the southern hemisphere is high standing and heavily cratered, resembling the battered highlands of the moon. Most of the northern hemisphere is low lying and sparsely cratered. The difference in mean elevation between the two hemispheres is roughly six kilometers. <laughs> Spooky Animal Crossing music. Um, Olympus Mons and the three peaks of Tharsis Montes stand on the west. Olympus Mons is about 22 kilometers high and 700 kilometers across, three times the size of Everest. Phaeton is an old theory of the hypothetical planet to have existed between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Mars could have been an Earth-like moon for this planet. The planet then somehow exploded and led to the formation of the asteroid belt. It rained down on Mars, destroying its atmosphere, giving massive scars to the other side. 
This was eventually ruled out and said that the asteroid belt was just unused material that couldn't form into planets because of Jupiter. That's kind of a cool theory, but yeah. See, this, that's the kind of shit that makes space so interesting to me. Um, this image shows a large tan-colored slice of Mars with the curvature of the planet visible at the top and bottom of the frame. Cutting diagonally right to left across the center of the planet like a belt are three darker raised patches, volcanoes. Many other features are visible across the frame, including scarred terrain clouds, the moon of Phobos, which can be seen as a dark, irregular blob to the lower left. Oh, that's what that is? That's neat. Oh, wow, that's, that's actually an amazing photo. Wow. I mean, discounting aliens and discounting conspiracy shit or whatever. If you just look at how far we've come as a species in the past hundred years alone, and that we have the technology to like photograph something like this, it's really cool. I wish we were doing a little bit more with this. I wish like, you know, we did the, the, the moon and the other things in the late sixties. And then we just kind of said, ah, eh, fuck it. I know there's been more research. I know we've done more since then. Trust me. I know that, but, it just seemed much more exciting then. And I would know I was around. I wasn't around. Storms on Jupiter. Jupiter's north pole is dominated by a central cyclone surrounded by eight circumpolar cyclones with diameters ranging from 4,000 to 4,600 kilometers. These powerful storms can be over 50 kilometers in height. Wind speeds can reach 350 kilometers an hour. Outer wild shit. Here's more. From the Juno infrared image from 2019. It's just hell. Here's another look at Jupiter. See, this is where space engine is fun to mess around in. Because you can actually go to these planets. Granted, it's not, like, perfect, but it, it's it's really cool to just, like, dick around and go from planet to planet. And, uh, and just imagine what it would be like to actually fly through it. There's some more storms on Jupiter. Some more. Jupiter's great storm is the largest in the solar system. It's the great red spot. It's um, 16,350 kilometers wide, bigger than Earth, by the way. Used to be bigger, but it's shrinking and its color is fading. Researchers aren't entirely, sh entirely sure what caused the spot to appear red or why it's so incredibly long-lived. Over 150 years. Yeah, at some point, this is going to just go away perhaps and jupiter is just going to look weird without it you know it's it's such a characteristic thing storms on saturn hexagon at north pole hypothesis for the shape is something about multiple small spins in different spin direction and spin speeds forming a big spin i'm not kidding that's how it was written why would you do this Here's some more. Now, this is much more scientifically, like, you know, we're not getting a bunch of small creatures. We got a couple small creatures, but we'll see. I'm going to see what the reaction is to this segment, because I'm enjoying this, but I, I don't think this is something I would want to do mostly. I think if we're going to do weird anomalous shit, I would like more um, just strange sounds, videos, creatures, that kind of thing. However, I do find anomalous solar system stuff to be particularly interesting on a personal level, especially considering Outer Wilds ended up being one of my favorite games. But, um, yeah, I do enjoy this kind of thing for sure. And, um, here's some Uranus storms. Uranus's dim inner and outer rings are also visible in this image, including the elusive Zeta ring. 
the extremely faint and diffuse ring closest to the planet. It also shows nine of the planet's 27 moons. The orbits of these moons share the 98 degree tilt of their planet, uh, parent planet relative to the plane of the solar system. And here's some Neptune storms as well. So, yeah, this is this is cool. I find this to be a really great image, though. I love that image. Just And it's like pulling in so much light that you're actually seeing a ton of galaxies, too. Just think about, chat, it, it almost doesn't make any sense that each of the things that you see in this photo is, is a galaxy. A galaxy. And not just a planet or another solar system, like a whole fucking galaxy. And there's almost innumerous galaxies in our universe. It just, it's like, it's two old guys from England. Anyway, I have some um, audio recordings. Here's Billy Myers uh, recording. This guy, I believe, is a fraud. Billy Meyer became famous from his UFO photos and his stories with extraterrestrial beings that he called the Flejarin. He claims to be the seventh reincarnation of Jesus, Muhammad, etc. Also had paid membership programs. Oh boy. Meyer claims to have made a recording in July 1980 of the sounds generated by his extraterrestrial contact spacecraft phasing in and out of reality. The original recording is 48 minutes long, but I couldn't find it. The sound was so loud that it alerted nearby neighbors, but they couldn't see any UFOs on the scene. Sounds like Star Trek, the original. Similar sound has been made using a recreated UFO model and a string. The wind is causing an acoustic resonance between the string and hollow body of the model, creating this type of unique sound. Yeah, I don't honestly believe for a second that uh, Billy Meyer is at all anything near legit based on some of the, the stuff I've, I've seen and read. But yeah, that definitely sounds like original Star Trek. Oh, there's also Pikmin music happening at the same time. Sorry about that. This is interesting, however. Isseti, Orion Craft. Isseti Ranch is near Mount Adams, where strange UFOs and beings are frequently seen. The aim of Isseti, enlightened contact with extraterrestrial intelligence, is to help with public awareness of the ET reality. <laughs> to assist people with connecting to positive, otherworldly beings. They have over 40 years of recordings and eyewitness testimonies. The non-physical and high spiritual nature of these have caused lots of criticism and drama. Nobody has been able to disprove these and have left many scientists baffled. This audio recording supposedly comes from the Orion spacecraft. No other info was given. Um, on their website, they have more weird photos. Like, just strange... I mean, I'm on their website right now. I don't know what the hell's going on here, but... Like... Seven-dimensional beings. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, God. They got a Bigfoot cast. Oh, no. But, yeah, I mean, there, there's, um... There, there certainly be some strange images... But this is, see, the problem here is this is when the skeptic in me comes out. When I look at a picture of the galaxies that exist, that's when I'm more likely to believe. But when I see, like, I don't know, this, it just doesn't, I don't know, it just feels, it doesn't feel right. I don't know. It's hard to explain. But regardless, I find the topic interesting even if I don't always believe the people that are most loud about it.
Um, one more thing I have. We don't really have a lot more, and I think we covered it. The Sierra Camp recordings in 1971. So there's some like audio. Um, I was told to skip ahead to 333. Then they would start making their sounds. And that was in 71 when I first started hearing them. And we started recording them. I don't know if this is supposed to be Bigfoot or Alien. Oh, potentially Bigfoot? Is this waking anyone's dog up? There's two of them across the creek at the big rocks. The Squatch is at the rocks. What are they? <laughs> I can't help but laugh at this. I'm sorry. having to shoot our way out. You're just sitting there, all of you are, are kind of petrified. You're just waiting to, for the walls to break open and something reach in there and grab you and hold you up and waiting for the light to break in the cracks of the walls. And All right, I mean, it's just squatch. We were in a tent, it just almost, it wasn't this dark, but uh, this thing, what it was, just kind of starts moving across over here behind us. Uh, elongated light, about probably three foot long about that big around and uh just a rod of light i i tell people when i talk about it uh, it's, it's it's like a star wars saber <laughs> white glowing but not bright glowing just glowing and it just moved slowly through the trees definitely controlled and uh oh, okay over here yep there's the star wars saber is it embarrassing to talk about? No, I don't care. I'm old enough now, nothing bothers me. <laughs> what makes you keep coming back? Uh, the mystery that's still here. There's still a mystery that needs to be solved or understood. And uh, I'm here now because you're here. <laughs> okay. And then they dismantled the structure. So is it aliens or, or Bigfoot? Or is it all connected? Is it is it Bigfoot aliens with shafts of light? I'm not sure. Well, whatever the case is, we live in a strange planet. And um, even if it's just a bunch of weird people and two old dudes from England... You know, there, there sure are some strange things out there. <laughs> and there they are. So thank you for watching this. Thank you, Octo, for putting this together. I enjoyed going through some of this and learning. And I hope you, you enjoyed your lesson in whatever the fuck this was. I still remain skeptical of a lot, but I remain also curious and I wonder... Why does this happen? And is all of this just so one cowboy in the woods can get famous by being on some wonky UFO or squatch hunting program? Possibly. But, but one thing's for sure. Buzz Aldrin will punch you in the face 
if you say he didn't go to the moon. And also, there's a monolith on Phobos. Trust him. Chat, thank you for watching. We survived another Sunday stream. Yeah. Um, if you have a Sunday stream idea, or you have any weird things or pizzas or whatever that you want me to review and discuss, feel free to uh, reach out. Vinesauce.email is the website, and that will take you to a number of um, well, the contact form, and you can send me all kinds of stuff, including hopefully Sunday stream material. That would be the best. That's, that's usually the stuff I, I would like to... Um, receive is Sunday stream material. So be sure to send that. But if you have any, any like weird games that you think I would like, or just strange pizzas that you've encountered or are aware of, that kind of stuff is good. Or even just something for me to watch like Club Mario. Uh, but mostly games, please. And uh, thank you for keeping Sunday stream alive, everybody. And we'll continue, I'm sure, with more various like corruptions and commercial chaos related stuff in the future i have a whole lot more packs for um choice or voicer and that will resume i think that'll be on rotation as well for a while and uh if you have any ideas for any new segments let me know too but that's it good night everybody and thank you sleep well enjoy your day be productive or or not Whatever it is, just thanks for being here. Thanks for the continued support. If you sub, I don't call those out. I don't, you know, that's not my thing, but I do appreciate them. And I hope that um, you aren't spending your money frivolously on some jabroni. But me, I'm the jabroni. Do yourself a favor and save that money and buy yourself some ice cream. It's hot out. All right. Good night. See you. See you next time. See you tomorrow, probably with Paper Mario. We'll do more Paper Mario, probably Monkey Ball, maybe some Elden Ring and maybe a couple other little things that I have planned, too. So. All right. Stream's over. Night's over. Goodbye. Thank you. When you are raising your children, don't make the same mistakes that your parents made with you. Make new and better mistakes. Fuck up your children's lives in a way that is unique. So that one day when they hate you, at least they won't say that you are unoriginal. <laughs>